So notice is hereby given that the Planning Board and Department of Public Works, Tree Warden, will hold a joint public hearing on Monday, July 30th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in Town Hall on the application of K&G Development Corporation, Kingston, for 45 Taylor Street, Pembroke, Mass., to cut, trim, or remove trees in the right-of-way and or to tear down or destroy a town wall, a stone wall, or uh, portions thereof in the right-of-way in order to construct the proposed subdivision in Town of Libby's Lane. All right, so we're, we've opened the town meeting, and I'd like to ask for a 10-minute um, postponement until we have a quorum. Can I go for five minutes, maybe, just in case? <laughs> well, ten, I, we're already five minutes in, so okay, fair enough, fair enough. let's do 10 minutes. We're going to reopen the public meeting. apologize for the delay. Um, so we're reopening the public hearing for the Scenic Road and Public Shade Trait requirements for subdivision number... 1802 located at 45 Taylor Street and entitled Libby's Lane, consisting of five new single family houses, one existing family house, and a new cul de sac road. This is joint public hearing with the tree warden. Um, Mr. Fulmine is here with us tonight. Um, and we have here Scenic Road Plan submitted by Grady Consulting. Dated July 3rd, 2018. Oh, and here we have it. Oh, wow. That one would be a little bit easier to see. Okay, so <coughs> do you want to give us a little description of what you're looking to do here? Sure. I understand we're blazing new territory here with the uh, first scenic road application. Well, no, we had one on um, Pheasant Lane. Oh, okay. Um, over on... Um, Oldham. 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 Oh, sure. Which is also considered a scenic way, but we have not had to utilize this very frequently. Okay. And um, so here we are. Very good. Um, so what we did here was we staked the center line of the proposed subdivision roadway. <coughs> uh, the stakes are located near the existing stone wall. There is a small portion of uh, existing stone wall which we are proposing to re uh, remove. We want to utilize the existing stones for a proposed stone wall um, matching the uh, existing wall. Uh, we've identified um, a few pine trees along the stone wall that will be removed as part of the roadway construction. Uh, we've identified uh, one large uh, maple tree, 30-inch maple tree, uh, that we actually believe we can retain uh, between the sidewalk uh, and the uh, edge of pavement for the proposed road. Uh, we submitted previously a detailed landscape plan uh, as part of the subdivision, uh, so there'll be a significant number of trees uh, planted along the entrance uh, in accordance with the approved subdivision plan. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, the photographs also keyed in, so you can actually take a look at the individual trees if you want to see them in the color photos as well. Okay. And which one of the ones in the color photo? Do you know where the ma maple tree is in there? Uh, I do. Let me just put this upside down for one second here. Um, I hung ribbons on uh, each of the trees to be removed. Uh, the maple tree is actually off to this side of the photograph right here. Oh, okay. So it's the thick one. Anybody else? Yep. Let me see that. So it's uh, this one here. Yeah. City is tree warden. Do you have any questions or concerns about? No, okay. And there is a, a memorandum from the chain um, that got copied in here. I guess we got to replace it. With, uh, so, so is it like the three to one replacement? Is that in a different area or kind of in the same area? Anywhere in that general area is okay. fine. Yeah. So would the landscape plan take care of this, is I guess my wondering? Yeah, I think it goes above and beyond the minimum that we usually ask for. Okay. And then how much stone wall is being taken out <coughs> of the entrance? Approximately 30 feet. 30 feet. And you'll use that? You're going to use that in the radius? In the radius? Correct. Yeah. Right. So 
So there's really none, uh, no stone wall on this side of the entrance. Oh, there uh, is it right now. Okay. Correct. It goes from roughly the middle of the entrance to oh, the okay. right. Yep. And so we want to use those same stones to rebuild an entrance curved along the sidewalk. Back in the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. That portion of stone wall is kind of in disrepair anyway, so the, the stone wall will probably be a little bit nicer than what currently exists there. Yeah, that's what it looks like. This is not very much of a stone wall, is it? I just wonder if the stone wall should follow the property line or well, that's if it needs to for utilities and stuff like that. That's where they're putting it, I think. Uh, the new wall is going on, on the back of the sidewalk, which is the, the lot line. But it isn't it? I think it's, I think there's a, looks like there's a gap between the new stone wall and the property line. We, yeah, we actually set it back off the back edge of sidewalks, approximately two feet. Um, whether it follows the exact property line or something between that and the sidewalk, whatever the board's pleasure on that. Jim, what were you saying? That it should follow where? Maybe follow the the property line rather than just so we have room if we need utilities or utility structures there. So it should be further back from the sidewalk? Yeah. Well, I can see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Because we yeah. use that right away for... A lot of reasons? Yeah. The only thing is aesthetically, is that going to look less... I don't think so. We might have to remove a little bit more stone wall to accomplish that so that it comes in starting right from this angle point and then comes in. So we'd have to take out about another 10 feet to follow the property line to do that. Oh, I see. So right now you're planning on leaving that yes. there. Yes, so we leave that 10 feet or so and then just parallel the sidewalk. And that's part of the scenic way. And that's part of the scenic way. So that's going to require more removal from the scenic way. So that's why we chose that location. It's where we felt we didn't need to disturb the existing wall any further. What about the other side? <coughs> it didn't have a stone wall. Can I have a question? Um, yeah, go ahead. Just there's to a, identify yourself. There's a, uh, the boundary is here, and right here was a... Michael Tyler. Michael oh, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to He's yeah. hearing up here, yeah. so he doesn't... Oh, okay. There's a cut uh, path right here with no wall. It's been the the wall has been pushed back to the side. Will you then we uh, align it? Bring the wall back out again, or what was your plan on the car path? Um, should be addressed to the board. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a response to that? Uh, we won't be touching the stone wall at all on that portion. On that portion of the property. Correct. It'll stay as it is today. As it the is. car path was open. Not long ago, and pushing those rocks to the side. So I think it might be best to bring it back out. What do you guys think? Any thoughts on that? Uh, was it was it pushed out by this developer? No, it wasn't. And I don't know how we can make him responsible for something he hasn't done. I mean, I can understand, you know, relocating the wall <coughs> at the radius, but I don't think we can make him go back and. Okay. I do stuff that he, he isn't responsible for. And Gene, you're more, your role is more with the trees than with Correct. the brick wall. Okay. I think this particular developer does a really nice job on everything he goes after. I'm pretty sure he's going to leave it I mean, is pretty it, respectable. Is it a big deal to pull out, to straighten out that little bit of wall that was pushed? And I would think the radius is going to be more compelling in terms of the look than the part that might get hidden in the trees. So if there's enough stones, you're saying you would kind of clean up the the layout of the stone fence, but not replace fence, really, is what we're saying. Any other? Well, do, do we need the roll? Is there enough room for all the utilities there? The notes, there is. I guess that would be the only issue. Gene, in your DPW hat, do you have any feelings about the corner there and the um, 
radius of that stone wall? No, not at all. Okay. That's the side the utilities are going on, right? On this side here with the wall. The side closest to us. Well, it probably, I don't know. So I guess the question that I'm hearing, can you identify yeah, yourself for the record? Right when, yeah, two, 279 Elm Street. The utilities that are going in, are they on this side or are they on that side? Okay, so um, uh, both. if you could let yeah, us know. We'll have water on one side, we'll have electrical on the other side. Okay. And the, <coughs> these are all underground utilities within the subdivision, right? Correct. Yes, everyone wants that these days. But we're really talking about stone walls and trees. Huh? Aren't we really talking about stone walls and well, trees? Well, yeah, but I guess the question is whether or not where they're putting the stone walls, is that going to interfere in any way with utilities? That was It's question. just usually at the entrance way. That's where you have all the, you know, right. cross boxes for the phone and all that. Are the boxes they are. and all that going to be in front of the stone wall or behind it? They're going to be behind it, right? So we're still waiting on the electrical layout from uh, Eversource or Instar. Okay. Um, and they'll make the final decision on that. It will likely be behind it. I mean, in that sense, it would be nice if it was behind that wall yeah. from an aesthetic perspective, which I, I think you would prefer too. Uh, you you, you know? can't be. You can't block yeah. the. Uh, they have to be able to get to those tra Excellent. the transformers. Like everything's aerial there, right? So it's going to have to come down off a pole and come into a junction box and then go underground. So I, that's. I'm just bringing that up. Just make sure there's room to do that. And still meet the requirements. Like the, is there? the utility companies aren't going to climb over a wall to get to their yeah, but the junction box. I'm thinking of the other d developments in town. They typically, you know, like any open space. So they may. Not, uh, I'm. S I don't see a lot of them right at the corner. Yeah, the transformer is usually in about 30, 40 feet. I would expect yeah, yeah. to see it probably up near this bound. Um, and they usually put it on an easement on the lot. On somebody's yeah. lot. Yeah, right. <coughs> I have it on my lot. I was the lucky one. <laughs> um, yeah. you so I'm sure we can work. Yeah, just make sure you work with them, I guess. That's fine. You were going to add something? I'm just saying is that we're working with what the existing stone is there. And I think it's more aesthetically better, beneficial if I continue the stone wall from the corner from the post tilers and bring it as far as it will go. I don't think bringing and see where it ends because if there's not going to be a stone wall on the other side of the road, then how's it going to work if we go take it to the one side of the road and then there's still a, a, a space in the wall. So that's my opinion. So what were you suggesting instead? That we rebuild the area that was taken out and wherever it ends, it ends. Just use the existing stones sure. as far as they'll go. And don't loop it in the way this shows? We'll loop it in as far as the stones will go. Where the, where the car path is, I think you're saying is pull the rocks up, right? label whatever it is. It just wouldn't look right to have this section of stone mm -hmm. with a space and then nothing on the other side of it. I want it to look right. Okay. And that's regardless of, you know, the rules. Everything else, I just think aesthetically it would look better. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. I have a bunch of stones on my property. I need some extras. I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a ton of them. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> but I, I think the issue is that to, to go with haul stones and bring them in, there's a cost involved to all of that. And the question is what we can reasonably expect the developer to do here. And I think if he's, if we're getting assurances that we'll have the stone wall continued as far as we can using the existing stones, I'm hearing that the board believes that that would be reasonable to require under the scenic road bylaw. And then to have the maple tree staying, but there'll just be a little bit of a trim of it for the roadway. And then, um, there will be a three-to-one replacement of the white pine and the pines, um, which are already have some issues because they've been trimmed so much by National Grid. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then on number three and four, those pines, one is dead, and the other one is has already been trimmed 70%. So those are just have a one-to-one -one 
replacement, and that is a replacement anywhere on the site? Is Correct. that the? Okay. And we have enough replacements coming in to the site to make up for these trees that are going to be taken out yes. as part of this project. Any other questions or concerns on this one? I know it's not in the purview of this meeting, but is there any way to soften the, the uh, curb abrams that come out on the street? It makes it look like a city type block. I know it's, I don't know, it's probably regulation you have to do that. Gene, do you want yes. to help us understand? <laughs> no, it's, it's got to stay standard. You can't, gotta, you can't change by road. Every project would end up different. Everything's right. got to be uniform. And that has to do with sure, if you ever have to re, um, redo the road, you're dealing yeah, with you uniform curb cuts. Street. Everything's got to be uniform. Though. Yeah. Which is part of, I think, why Route 14 took longer, too, was a lot of that had to be redone along the way there. That's, that's a change of layout. Yeah. A lot of locations, yes. And a lot of different locations. A lot of roads that have happened over the years in different ways. So our, our regulations require us to do uniform curb cuts so that it creates over time some uniformity in how these roads connect up. And also, we're going to have a sidewalk on one side of the street, right? Yeah. And so that's the other thing is there's a theory that down the road, any roads could be expanded to have sidewalks. So we're always requiring developers to have more sidewalks within the subdivision and to build it out to the street in a way that if there's ever a subdivision on that street, it could connect right in, theoretically. Yeah, that's the biggest request we get through our office is everybody wants sidewalks on that street. And ADA is a big push right now. So. That's the other thing. They, the sidewalks that do come out to the main road have to be ADA compliant and current ADA compliance. Correct. And so that's part of why they have to be so big is to make that and also for visibility. Any yeah, other? They, have, they have to be concrete, the ramps, with what I call the rumble strip. So, so yeah. that's, that's the ADA compliance. That's the new rig. So. The rumble strip is newer, right? Yes, so is the concrete. Oh, used to be able to do asphalt. Oh, all, okay. All that was before my concrete. time. Okay. <laughs> my time's short. Well, we had it up at uh, Pheasant Lane and we had it a couple subdivisions. Well, and, and there was an issue because they had it, started it before that reg went into place. Yeah, and then we made it do it to, to the current regs. To the current regs, yeah. So. <coughs> okay, so. I was just going to say, going, so. We're about to finish up this hearing and start our next right. one. Right. So I was just wondering, do we, do we, I can't remember how we did on Pheasant Lane. Do we, do we vote or is it just having the hearing? That's not clear in the, in the statute. <laughs> the bylaws, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Having read the statute, it's so not clear. I, I think the, that the builders agreed to reconstruct the wall where it was taken down and extend it as far as you can. With the existing stone. With the existing stone. So if it falls short of the of the radius, it does. I just have one question, <laughs> and Rick would probably answer this better than me, but I'm not sure how many <coughs> stone there are, stone wall there is there now. If there's enough for me to do the two radiuses, then I don't have any problem doing that, but I don't think there is. I, I, would, I would think that what I said. if you fill in the gap right. and then run it as far as you can, probably that's to the elm. Right. <coughs> so it would be to this plan. Right. So we can just move to accept this plan? Exactly. As presented? Exactly. Let me move that, please. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We also need the tree warden to vote on that? Yes. <laughs> Um, and I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All right. So the public hearing on Libby's Lane is closed, and now we, well, have, we have to, to open up. So we have to vote on. Closing. Oh, second <laughs> for closing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we need to open our next public hearing. So we're good on you guys. You're thank all set. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank very you. Much. This thank is you a very <coughs> nice way to do this. So thank you. We do quite a few of these in a number of towns. This is kind of the way most of the towns are doing. Well, we're new at this. We don't have a lot of scenic ways, I guess. We have seven of them. <laughs> And with no, that we've been but with it. just no general. Well, we haven't been doing a lot of scenic ways. We've been asked to do it. So. 
That's for this. That's for this one? Yeah. Okay, I think they provided this. This is our packet. So I'm going to open the next public hearing for Scenic Road and Public Shade Tree Requirements for Subdivision Number 1701, located at 73 Taylor Street, and entitled Bristol Estates, consisting of seven new family, single family houses and a new cul de sac road. This is a joint public hearing with the tree warden as well. Hi, folks. My name is Tom Pazurski from Merrill Engineers in Hanover. Get over and um, this subdivision was approved, as you know, as a definitive subdivision that's under construction. And I was fortunate enough, I went through the archives and I found this photograph. The photograph that you have in front of you is where the roadway cuts into the subdivision. And if you know, <clears throat> you'll see some remnants of a stone wall here. That's the property line. That's where the edge of the Taylor Street layout is. And you'll also note that we have a utility pole, which is this utility pole right here. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there are no trees in the layout. And there was zero trees lost as a result of proving and constructing the roadway. And uh, you can see from the stone wall there, there's probably about a whopping 10 or 12 stones. The walls are just remnants of a stone wall at that point that were lost as a result of the roadway coming. There are other areas of the subdivision where there are much better defined walls, but in this particular area, there's almost no stone walls present. So, there were no trees taken down? Zero. That is about two. In the layout. the layout. Zero. Okay. And we preserved, when we did this lot here, we preserved the trees along the side to provide screening along Taylor Street. So, still Great. natural. Yeah, it doesn't look like you're doing a lot of grading at the entrance right there. No, either. we didn't. Yeah. Can I just take a quick look? You sure can. And this utility pole, this is the utility pole here. And this is where the roadway went in here. The layout, the edge of the layout's in here. So There's these no trees. trees weren't in the layout? Nope. Private property. Okay. You see on the other plan, they go a lot. The wall is located on that one. Yep, well, yep. the stone. Yep. So, seeing that there are no trees removed here and no issue for the scenic road bylaw, I make a motion that we close the public hearing. Did we give an opportunity for the public to comment? Or I, I, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Were there any comments before we close the public hearing on this? So I've made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Um, Dan Taylor seconded that. Um, does the tree warden have anything that we need to look at, or nope. are you in agreement that in there agreement. was nothing taken out of the load layout? I concur. Okay. So all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Then we're all done. Thank you. Tom, is that your shortest hearing ever? <laughs> Inside? So, the, the um, old house. Is that going to stay? Yeah. Um, there was something we wanted to talk to Jane about. Tom, is that your, well, we Tom, was that your shortest public hearing? Uh, was it, was it, it the uh, solar? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's mine, too. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> oh, we have it at 7.30, yeah, but I'm going to say we pick it up a little early. Let's pick it up now. Thank you. So, so, Jean, one of the, we had, um, the next thing on our agenda, we'll move it forward a little bit early. We'll hear anybody if they come in a little bit late, but, um, we had talked about potential visual screening options along Habermach Street for the Habermach Solar Project. Yep. And so we had done a site walk two, two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And we noticed that you guys had recently redone the fence. That's the recycling center. That's their budget and their maintenance. Oh, that's their the Recycling maintenance. supervisor, Mike Valenti. Yeah. So interesting because we were talking, so we have 20, $25,000 in escrow right now that the solar project gave as a condition of not having to do a landscaping plan. Mm -hmm. We said, we'll give us 25000 Over time, we'll, over the next two years, we'll look at it, we'll hear from the neighbors and try to use that 25000 to create some visual screening from the roadways to protect 
you know, just to protect the look of the area for the roadway and for the abutters. And when Paul Whitman was still on the board, our thinking was, well, let's wait until after the um, sidewalk project is done there and the streets repaved so we sort of see what we're dealing with. And also, you don't want road construction right after you're planting new right. plants, right? But the question becomes, as we were out there the other day, is does it make more sense to extend that fence along the street? But now the question would be who would maintain it. I was thinking that we thought that the other fence also was DPW no, budget. That all falls on the recycling supervisor and the solid waste budget. Well, we could talk to them about maintaining. Should we talk to them about maintaining yeah, we, it? Yeah, we can talk to Mike. What, how many feet were we talking about adding to it? We talked about adding approximately 100 feet maximum. Uh, yeah, because you just had all that replaced like a week and a week and a half. Right. right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, when I talked to Mike, uh, he suggested that we uh, maybe put mulch along the entire front of where the, the fence is. So it would be, what do we say, 300 feet of mulch? What, on the back side of the sidewalk? Yeah, between the sidewalk and the fence. And in lieu of putting plants in there. Mm -hmm. Any plant we put in there is not going to screen anything for a long no. time. No, if it survives, yeah, to keep it watered. And so I don't want anything out there that's going to impede the new sidewalk because you know no, what's going to happen. The roots are going to go like no. some of the subdivisions already. Mm -hmm. Well, and so that's what we were debating out there was, and that's why we said, okay, well, let's put this on the agenda right after if Gene's going to be here for the tree hearing, we can talk to you about, you know, there were people who. The, one of the abutters was hoping that we were going to put some plants to screen in between. There's one gap between the trees that's bigger. The rest of the gaps aren't that big. The biggest gap is that first part where the fence would probably be the best visual and the lowest maintenance, even if it ended up in the town's general budget. A town's probably easier to maintain than more bushes and things that might Oh, yeah, because I don't have the resources available now for what I have to do with never mind trying to add anything new. What do you think about us giving you some, I mean, is this a project where we could work with the DPW to use the mulch and pay for a mulching project along there that might beautiful, you know, kind of finish off the sidewalk project with some found money? I'm sure I could take care of mulch, mulch yeah. work and getting that done, but I mean, I wouldn't be looking to get any planting of trees and then the maintenance of trees and, and stuff afterwards yeah. and water and... But if we had, like, say that the, the fence took I don't know, fifteen thousand, and we had another ten thousand. Could could we allocate that to the DPW to use for, you know, mulching yeah, if you that want us area? To mulch between the back of the sidewalk and up to the fence, or whatever you guys want. We I mean, we could fit that in. Whatever you can do with ten thousand, and yeah. I don't know if you do it with your own staff or you bid that out, but would that would be up to you. What really. would you prefer? Would you prefer to get the funds and have the project for some? the town's employees to do or would you prefer to see, it all, rather done? see it all done found out would you be willing to be the one to farm out my concern um, Dan is that we don't really have a lot of experience well, was, so in our initial when you initially brought this up I misinterpreted I didn't I thought those were town funds that needed to be spent what well they're what? escrowed under the control of the planning board but the to planning go, board yeah. doesn't really have a tremendous amount of expertise at public bidding, right? Right. So somebody else is going to have to help us with the public bidding if we take on to do it ourselves. And it just seems like so you would rather stuff, be in control of it. All that stuff goes through the town administrator. He's the public bidding person, procurement officer. So, so the, it doesn't the matter. The town manager will take all procurement. So technically, it's town administrator does all the procurement. We provide what we need, and then he's supposed to do the solicitation. We can probably make a request through the town manager to uh, put a, a bid out under, because we've done it before. Is that um, what you would prefer us yeah, to do? Yeah, if you keep it low enough, then you just got to solicit three prices, best practices, is and you're that, good to is go. That, is that still 10 grand? 10 grand. Yeah. If you get up to 25, then you're talking central register and all that. So so try and keep it 10 grand and under you good. Right? They might have upped it. I know they were talking about upping it. But so you do you do the fence as a contractor and the mulching as a exactly. contractor. Right. Those are going to be two different two contractors, right? Two different right? contractors, yeah. and see how they come in. You get to shorten the fence, you get to lessen the mulch. Yeah. Mike, but do you have any objection to the fact that someone's going to be mulching along your brand new sidewalk? Or no, because I'll hold them responsible for any damage. <laughs> they'll, have to, 
They'll have to ha have a roadway permit, a bond anyway, even though they're not in the road. They're working in the right of way. Yeah. So if there's any damages, okay. they still got to have a bond to cover. Yeah, well, so I still have to have a bond through us anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking for the least complicated right. way to get this beautified a little bit. I think you put the, the fence in have. first and then do the contract for right. the mulch. Yep. Exactly. So you can see what you got. And so is we'll, that we'll your right of way? That So out from where the fence is now to where the trees are along the side, behind the sidewalk, if we kept that same fence <coughs> line and went to the next set of trees, which is what we're talking about, that 6,800 feet, is that your right of way? Or is that, whose control is that under? Recycling center. Yeah. Recycling yeah. center? Yeah. It's recycling. My right of way is probably just about behind the edge of the sidewalk now. Yeah. That so that's sense. who we have to talk to. That's, that shouldn't be a problem. Now. They, I'm sure they're going to be happy to, okay. to screen whatever they, whatever they can. Like Tom and I could separately get prices from good people that are completely yeah. separate from us, but that we know do good work. Yeah. Just for you guys, just for the board yeah. to review. And get it done. And the town administrator and you and the things like that. Well, we just give it to the town administrator and say, here's what we what yeah. we think we need done. Yeah. We need the extra fencing oh. for the for the recycling center. We we need the mulching. Mm. That's yeah. it. And let let let, let him, him figure it out. Let, let him, him do it. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we said we've we've got fifteen thousand or twenty thousand dollars available this to get to this. Where you get where it gets complicated, though, you dump that on the town administrator. We've had a conversation about it. Now he's going to get pricing on it, and there's no, there's nothing in writing as to what he's getting pricing on. Like right. one of us, I think some, some kind of a sketch or Someone's something. Someone's got to need it. We'll need to from here to here. Yeah. Yeah. At least, at least, at least a guy for you. Yeah. Well, we asked Peter maybe about doing a sketch. I could meet the people out there and say, "This is what we need you to price." Yeah. And then they Did can the trace it, and you at the board can compare it. And then the we hand it over to the town administrator. Here is detailed proposal. Here's the ones we like. The These make the most the sense. Committee. These are what we talked about. So, because if we dump that on the town administrator, I mean, we may not get what we think and, we're and getting. Then, you can also yeah. ask Mike Valenti. Yeah. He just did three prices for the fence and that just got replaced. Mm -hmm. It might be close enough to it. He can just go back to the low bidder yeah. for the extra footage. And he knows what he could do with change order on that contract. Mike that would be the way Mike to do. Mike and I have already talked about right. that, Gene. Oh, that's the Mike you talked to. No, that's Mike who you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Becky, the, the easy way to do it is to give the existing contractor a change order to increase the length of the fence. Because it's, it's probably a contract in place. As long as it doesn't exceed twenty-five percent, there's no problem. Yep. Yeah. Well, but, right. yeah, that's fine with that. I think that's That'd be the way to go. And then we just have to have you go out to figure out what the mulch and the sort of cleaning up yeah. and dressing up the area. You could dump it all on Mike. He's the man. He'll get it done perfectly. Right. <laughs> you call Mike. Well, we need to move quick before that contract's closed out and gone. <laughs> <laughs> the one we already have. Uh, okay, so right. um, do we want to uh, authorize Matthew to talk to or Dan Smith, one of you, to talk to Mike Valenti and yeah. try to move that project forward? Yep. Do you want to do it, Dan? I'll do whatever you guys need. Yeah. Do you Tom want to do it, Tom? Uh, Mike, really well, Mike, and I, Mike and I yeah. worked together for 17 years. So. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to talk to Mike Valenti? I'll talk to Mike. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a, a um, do we need to do a motion on that, or is that just they're going to come back with we'll proposal? Come back, we'll come back with results. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gene. All right, thank you. Good night. So, Tom, to hey, Thanks, so Tom, I mean, vaguely speaking, how, how much does like a fence like that cost? For I, I think it would, I want to say that it was $46 a foot, if I remember. Okay, but well, we're going to find out when you get yeah. some pricing. Yeah, well, we'll, I'll talk to Mike about it and we'll get it. Yeah. All right, uh, so. And, and we know we know somebody who makes mulch in town. So no, I'll drag me into it. I'm going to fall in your court. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have. Um, I'm going to go through some of our admin items before our next agenda item comes up. We have our next board meeting is August 13th. For your everyone to note for their records, we received a card to the planning board from Van, Brian Van Riper's family, and there's copies in your. Folders, there's going to be a basketball tournament in Brian's memory on September 15th at the community center. His, his wife and um, family have invited us to have a team from the planning board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if my son could play on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So there's a thought. <laughs> I've got your grandsons would be happy to <laughs> My uh, basketball days are over. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're tall enough. My luck, I'd break something. Oh, no. <laughs> so the question is, um, we'll find out more information about yeah, this. Yeah, do that. <laughs> it's intriguing. It's intriguing. That's a nice way to put it. Um, we need to approve the minutes for July 9th. Um, okay, for that one, I guess, I'm sorry. We just, I guess, check page four in terms of the, the, how I described the, just because it might be a serious sensitive thing, how I described the return I don't know why. I don't think we need to say that. Um, yeah, I mean, that I don't. I think there's too much detail. Yeah, I don't think we have to. I I would move that we. Well, I would ask. Paragraph two could go. Oh, I was actually thinking the second sentence of the first paragraph. Well, the second sentence. We get rid of that. It's just not necessary. Yeah. Okay. No. Paragraph two could stay then. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you need to overthink it. No. All right, so we'll remove that second sentence of the first paragraph. And with that change, do we have a motion to approve these minutes? I'll make a motion to approve these minutes with that sentence removed. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. Abstaining? Including that Mr. Smith was absent. Right, because it's yeah. in the final paragraph. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry, remove. Uh, all the way yeah. to the end of the paragraph. Yeah, yeah, no, the yeah. Okay, just, uh, Do you want to abstain from huh? that vote? Yeah, you kind of lost me here where this was last week. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So You don't need to. All right, good. <laughs> you weren't well. present, so you can abstain. I'll, I'm going to abstain. <laughs> I heard that dreaded address, so I think I'll stay out of it. Okay. Um, We have some issue about the curbing in catch basins at Bristol Estates. You know, I didn't see this when we had. Well, apparently, that's. When we yeah, had so Bristol Estates here, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's somewhere towards the middle, I think, of your, of your quarters. It's. Talking about Tyler's report in the curbing? A one, one page letter from Tyler Dims. Um, yeah, I read it. it. wasn't particularly good. And um, I mean, he talked to me about it today. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to verbally describe. He said you have to be there to talk verbally describe unless you're an engineer, I suppose. Um, but um, uh, basically, the, I guess the, the the curbing, the stone curbs they're using for the oh no, what's the, the terminal thing, I guess, sort of the transition between the vertical banner curbing and, and the kick cut berm or the bituminous skunk saving berm um, isn't the one that's specified in the rules and regs as shown in the drawings. Um, so, I mean, it's it's still, I mean, I guess, you know, the appearance is maybe not quite as good and it's an issue sometimes if, um, like, if, um, if one gets knocked out of place by a snowplow, for example, the EPW might not have extra ones of those to put in. So it sounds to me like it's maybe not, and then also there's an issue with the cash conditions, I guess they're not quite something correctly. So it sounds like they're not sort of massive issues, but they're issues that might maybe should be corrected. So I think what the I problem is that's wondering is should, should we pursue it and force them or try to force it, them to fix we it? We might want to look at it because that's all exp very expensive stuff to fix. Why aren't they? Why are they doing this? Do you think they're trying to save money, or they just went by somebody else's town regs? No, I think they just. I mean, to not line up the stone that is supposed to line up with the catch base, it's like it's just as easy to put it where it's supposed to be as to not put it where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and what difference does it make if it's not where it's supposed to be in the catch base? If it's way off, the water isn't going to flow as well into the catch basin. 
What they're talking about is if you've seen catch basin, sometimes you see a granite stone in the carving yeah. that has a hole in it. So yes. it also allows water to go in. Yes. Well, if that hole doesn't look, if the catch basin's here and the hole's over there, well. Well, that would be kind of stupid. Right, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why they would do that. It's just as easy to line it up as to. <laughs> it wasn't quite clear to me if, if exactly that's the problem or if it's. Well, I guess the pro we, we, we kind of need to see how, how bad is it? Is it like off an inch or is it a foot off? Well, or? It may be fixed by now. Can we, can we ask the, um, can we ask the developer to respond to Tyler's letter? Yeah, yes. I, mean, I can get well, in touch but, with but, him. Well, but has Tyler heard from them back? It, it doesn't sound like it. I think that's why he, he dropped off the letter today because he's worried that sort of they're not getting the I mean, they did eventually reply to him, but it doesn't, he doesn't get the sense, I guess, that anything's going to be done to fix it unless, <coughs> he, you know, we, you know, he sort of pushes them further or we talk to them or something. I mean, I said to Tyler, like, maybe you could come in in two weeks and, and explain it to the board, but I suppose if we do that, we could have Owen or somebody with the project. Well, I don't know why we don't just send this letter to the developer. Well, they got it. Who yeah. got it yeah. and say the planning board would like to understand how these matters will be corrected. Yeah. yeah. Please please provide sure. a response. Yeah, yeah and they will yep. get the letter in a few days if they haven't gotten it yet since so CCC. CCC. So let's just ask for a response from them. Yeah. The board. That may be enough. Mm -hmm. They could have fixed it by now. For, for now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You get the sense though those stones are staying right where they are until we jump up and down. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Jim. Yeah. Sound like they I mean, why do we go through all this well, effort to do site plans if people aren't going to follow them? Well, mm -hmm. this is kind of like the same stuff that we went through with Pheasant, <coughs> Pheasant Hill. Pheasant, Pheasant Lane. 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 Yeah. So, maybe it's best to send a letter saying, you know, I think that's a good idea. So we, we don't need to vote on that, though. No. No, I, I think I we think just, think we send that, as a, as a matter of course, we send that to... You know, some of the things we do during well, this Well, is Merrill there? Merrill's their engineer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so they should be able to respond to us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but <coughs> I can call. I can contact Thomas. But, uh, hmm. um, did we uh, sign the decision in Wolfston, or is that something we still need to do? We have to sign it, right, Matthew? I need to sign it, right? I think I need to sign yeah, it, Yeah, and I guess we got the quorum, and um, yeah, I've got it for day 30, but we can do it now. Please. Yeah, yeah let's do good. it. So for that one... Oh, I see. We have a, a, a possible vote, so they may come in, so let's hold off on that one. Well, is there... Really? We haven't voted on it yet? No, we, we voted didn't vote on the waivers. We didn't vote on the waivers. <coughs> My bad. I mean, Sorry about that. You voted to grant plan approval, but you haven't voted on, on the actual decision. All right, we'll do but, that. I mean, we'll I, do th we'll do that when they might be here. So let's yeah, just yeah. hold up on that. Um, the deadline for completion of pass for 590 Washington Street and 593 to 595 Washington Street. Should we offer to return the engineering review balances? I guess my question is, do we get as built? Um, I don't think so. Okay, then I think the question would be, can they send this as built to be reviewed? before we re talk about releasing engineering balances. Does anybody yeah. disagree? Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the problem is we're not always getting the as built and the and this goes to the issue that we really haven't fully discussed um, that I was supposed to send a letter on building permits and site as built. Occupancy, occupancy permits and as built. Oh, that's right, not building, occupancy permits. Um, Dominic's Way subdivision, we still don't have revised drawings, so I guess that's on hold just so people know. We have um, an, some information here updating on the progress of the 240 and 258 Oak Street litigation between Russell Field and Brian Murphy, where we were named, but we've taken a position of it's between the parties, that we're not really the real party in interest here. Um, so. Rachel Keller, who is the Community Preservation Committee Administrative Assistant, has informed us that since Brian Van Riper's death, the Planning Board position on the Community Preservation Committee has been vacant. 
and per state law, a member of the planning board is supposed to be on the community preservation committee. They only meet about four to eight times a year, and the meeting time is generally 6.30 p.m. on Thursday nights. Does anyone want, affirmatively want to be on the community preservation committee? I, I was like, pass. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Does it tie into the other work you're doing, or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, on the, oh, Will's supposed to do it. Dan was raising his hand. That's all right, though. Oh, you? Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> I think I do like Let's not about this too hard. Okay, so <laughs> I will step. I will remove my interest from the consideration. Do we have to appoint, or does the, the selectman appoint that? Who appoints it? No, I, th I think we have to send a member. I think we have to send a member. Okay. Because it's a, a representative of the planning okay. board onto the community preservation committee. Apparently, um, if they need further approvals from the Board of Selectmen, they can get them. But I think we say, so um, Andrew Wundell has agreed to be our representative. Does they want to make a motion that we appoint Andrew Wundell to be our designated representative for the Community Preservation Committee? So moved. Do we have a second? Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstaining? Great. Okay, Morning. Andy, you have another job. Good. Um, okay. I think we're actually moving along here. We are. So I think we're we get done before dark. Well, the problem is we're half an hour early. So what that's, move, that's never a problem. You know what? <laughs> we had an eight four. Well, no. The only question is whether or not someone was coming in on two sixty two eighty Oak Street. Oh yeah, they are. They are coming in on that, so we can't move that up. And that's a half an hour from now. Uh, we could move up the issue of the possible reorganization of the planning board. <coughs> Is there a reason to? Well, we have to We have to reorganize every year. We haven't done it. And we haven't yeah. done it. Well, I thought, we were waiting I thought for we John Scholl to come in. That we we had agreed that we weren't going to change the other day. We're, we're all right. Yeah, but you still, I think you still do need to. I go thought, thought we already did that. But, no, you still I think we process. usually do that when we be, when we're new members. No. The first time we're all <laughs> together. And so now we've got. Okay. I did two years ago. You could do two years ago. He's not here, but he's all right. a full member. He's been sworn in and everything. So we've now got our set of new memberships. I think. No. And you do have great. to do like a new awesome. signature sheet, which I've prepared. So why don't we go through the process very quickly then? Since it doesn't take very long to do. Yeah, no. I prepared. There's a and so we've got there. we've got this in here. Yeah, it's near the top. I didn't see it. Yeah. Oh, here it is. All right. So somebody. I'll make I'll make this initial motion okay. that the planning board reorganize and consider nominations for the following positions: chairman, vice chairman, clerk, planning board assistant, and take any action on the following: meeting nights and signature plans. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. So now we need um, nominations for chairman. I'll nominate uh, Becky Coletta for chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh wait. Yeah, you have to. We have to close nominations I'll, on this. I'll move that the nominations be closed. A second. Do we? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So now call for the vote for the chair. Okay. Now, um, Nominate, nominations are closed and vote for the chair, right? Yep. This is weird. Okay, so our nominations have been closed for chair, and we will now vote. All in favor of myself as chair? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Okay. Okay, I'll, uh, Nominations for vice cha chairman are now being accepted. I can somebody. I'll nominate uh, Mr. Andrew Wandell for vice chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, wait a minute. Oh, just for the nomination. For the nomination. All right, I'll move that we now close the nomination. Okay. Second. This is Second. ridiculous. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we really have to go through all that? Yep. <laughs> 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 Sir. Do it. Okay, Not nominations for clerk are now being accepted. Um, I'll we? nominate Tom Irving for clerk. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
I'll move um, that we close the nominations for town for clerk. <laughs> all in favor of closing nominations? Aye. 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 All right. All in favor of um, Mr. Irving as our clerk? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Planning board assistant probably doesn't need to be done anymore because it wouldn't be annual town meeting. The salary is negotiated by the. Well, I think we still have we to still technically have to appoint our agent mm -hmm. under the. There are okay. certain. Um, so by statute, we're supposed to be able to appoint an agent, and I think oh, there okay. are certain certain statutory. All right, I'll move that we appoint that uh, Matthew Hine as the planning board assistant. Second. To uh, retained as planning board assistant at the salary approved at the annual town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. No. I think everybody signed that, Matt. This actually yeah, is, but, but why did all these say Mr.? Okay. Because it was a day. <laughs> it was written in 1960. Was far more misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make a motion. We're still six to one people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we haven't succeeded very much, have we? No. Forget the um, I'll make a motion that the planning board continue to hold its official meetings on the second and fourth Monday of each month, convening at 6.30 p.m., in the designated planning board room. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Um, well, so I'll make a motion that Tom Irving be authorized to sign plans. Submit clerk. Second. Which are not subject to subdivision control and to certify any action of the board? Second. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, all those in said. favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? All right. So we are now officially <coughs> reorganized. We'll have signature cards. Do you have those prepared? I did, and I was anticipating that everybody would be. But John Scholl like still needs to sign so that his signature gets on the registry. Yeah, so I'll get it from him sometime this week or next week when he comes back, I guess. Okay, great. Uh, where is that thing? So the other discussion item tonight that seems. If somebody comes in later, we can um, talk about it. But is the uh, I'm going to propose we move up on the agenda the discussion about possible changes to the zoning bylaws. Mm. Bylaws. I have a quick question. Oh, on that. I'm sorry. Just in, I'm very sorry, but I guess um, can you guys do this 30-day uh, extension for Dominic's way? Oh. Uh, so we want to move, we have a request here I'll move that, that we, we have a 30-day extension for the definitive subdivision number 1801 entitled Dominic's Net Day <laughs> Way to extend the deadline from August 5th to September 4th, 2018. Second. You moved? I moved it. You seconded it. Aye. Aye. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We have an extension. All right. Let me see that. Uh, yeah, I put it on the okay. top, but it actually looks more like a headline than like. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's okay. Kind of weird. Confuse me. So changes to the zoning bylaws. Becky, I have a quick question on that. Are we? How do we conform to the open meeting law? Do we have to like discuss any changes at a regularly scheduled meeting, or can we have a like a working session? Or does that have to be limited to three members, or how do we how do we go about doing that? So what I had learned at some point recently is that if we have a subcommittee to look at the bylaws and say, do we have changes we need to make, then that subcommittee becomes subject. If it's a formal subcommittee of the board, that subcommittee becomes subject to the open meetings law. So the subcommittee then needs to meet and post agendas and meeting schedules. But we don't necessarily need a quorum of the whole board, we just need a quorum of the subcommittee in order to hold those meetings. So it becomes a little easier to have a working group than to have the whole group talk about it. But I do think we should take a few minutes as a whole group and talk about what kind of changes do we think are, are needed. I know there's a few that have cropped up that I've heard about people talking about. Um, we had um, one was the um, the question of whether or not uh, we were talking about the other day as part of the housing production plan. Yeah. 
which we need to take up soon in another meeting. Whether we're going to. I mean, I, I actually read through a lot of that, and it all seems great. But really, where the rubber meets the road is what do we come up with for in, in from so, for some new zoning regs. What do you mean? We well, need a lot of new zoning. The housing regs. production plan doesn't do anything. It's the zoning regs yeah. that, that are yeah. that you come up with. Right. And what are actually where the you know where you get, make changes. Right. And what, yeah. what was it one of the ideas there that to include in the inclusionary zoning? Isn't that the term used? That was one thing. I mean, the other. Uh, that would, would but be, that can mean different things, right? Right. right. Yeah, right. it can be anything we come up with as long as it like gets to that goal. It was my understanding, but I, I actually, in reading through all that information, I came up with more questions than I had answers. Uh, one big thing is I didn't have a full understanding of how affordable units that we had before suddenly fell off the rolls, and then I don't have a clear understanding as if you if you've a rental unit and it's got a deed restriction, how would that ever fall off the rolls or stuff like that? If it's a rental unit, who decides who gets rented to? So I guess the question is whether anyone ever followed through in putting a deed restriction on those units, where it was a rental unit as part of a single family home, right? Right, which which un under our current zoning bylaws is allowed as long as it's allowed for affordable housing use. And it would count, but I don't think we've ever had a system for tracking. Well, I thought it, uh, it seemed to me like the, we were tracking them for a couple of years and then a unit would suddenly like fall off. But I don't know how that happens if it's recorded at the Registry of Deeds. It shouldn't if it's okay, recorded. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I'd like to understand what the issue is before we write a zoning well, so uh, I think ordinance that you know, it allows it to keep happening. <laughs> well, I think it's something. Um, I mean, there, I mean, part of the reason I'm mentioning this is just because in the two years I've been here, I've sort of seen some just kind of some zoning things that kind of have come up that sort of need to be cleaned up. Which, probably aren't controversial, but just sort of need to be fixed, and maybe I can make a list or make a more formal list that you guys can review. Yeah, so. I mean, but I don't think that addresses exactly Jim's that issue. That so Jim's right. issue is that according to our zoning bylaws, if someone wants to do right. an accessory unit that is not an in-law unit, they if they meet the affordability requirements, they are allowed to do it provided they get a deed restriction on the use of that unit. but. The question is, were they really deed restrictions, or was it just part of the building permit, and we kind of lost track of enforcement over time? I, that's what I I'm think, thinking. I think enforcement is the, the issue with that, probably the biggest issue. Because, I mean, I don't think that's really our... Well, but it, I, I guess I look at... Well, we need to craft a bylaw that would at well, least that's what, point, yeah. point to where the enforcement is. If... Right? if well, but if, if it's in the bylaw and it's just a question of enforcement, then we can tell the Board of Selectmen that we think there's an enforcement issue rather than a bylaw issue that would increase. You know, if yeah. we got another 10 units out of that, that would be huge to well, meet I, I think we could do it fairly easy, but the other question I have is, what does that deed restriction look like? Does it just basically say you can never rent this unit for more than this amount, or you can never sell it for more than this amount? Or does it say... You can not, never rent for more than 80% of the median income from, you know what? from, the, from the last I fiscal think, year. I is that? No, no, wait that a is. minute. It 